The Epic Family Road Trip. Early on in the winter, Pete carved out these steps here, which have been really convenient for getting up and down. We'll probably build some wooden ones eventually, but they've been there all winter, but now we're having the thaw freeze of spring, so that has turned to a very dangerous skating rink. So what we're gonna do is uh, take these ashes from the fireplace inside and just scatter them up. Typically you'd use um, a salt sand mix, but we don't have salt and we don't have sand right now. It's all frozen, so ashes seem to work. The only downside to ashes, you don't want it too thick so you don't track it into the house, but uh, just to alleviate that um, trip hazard or that slip hazard, it's worth it's worth the risk of getting a bit of ash on your boots. So I'm just going to go ahead and shake it out. You don't need tons. There you go. A couple of minutes ago, that was sheer ice. I just about slipped right to the bottom, but now you can walk up and down safely. So keep that in mind. Ashes can create traction on ice for you if you're in need. Carol and uh, Dan brought these in a couple weeks ago and yesterday they went and picked them up and we got them all repaired and anything that we had broken during those really slushy months uh, are fixed and so we're going to offload them, drive them back to the camp and um, use them for dragging some maple out of the bush. Uh, we're hoping to do some maple syrup in the next little while and uh, for that you're gonna have to have a constant good hot fire burning we've already identified some dead maples around about so we're gonna get that wood prepared and then if things warm up in the next week or so we'll start uh, a big old fire and start boiling <laughs> Morning guys, we are heading up on the island here to get some maple wood that we've seen come down. So we, we know of some trees that are down that are hardwood and we've also marked some standing dead timber. Um, with maple trees in the winter, it's really hard to tell if they're alive or dead. So we don't take any chances. If the only way we'll harvest a standing tree is if the top's completely broken off it and there's no live, no branches at all because some maples will have bigger buds and others won't show the buds as well. So they could look dead, but then they come out in the spring. So we don't want to cut down any live trees, of course. We're going to haul it all back here up into that area, which is our fire pit where Carol does her outdoor cooking, because that's where we plan to boil down the maple sap into maple syrup. Uh, we don't want to use the hardwood that we've got designated for the house. So that's why we're going out getting as much hardwood as we can. And in a couple of days, it's supposed to warm up and hopefully the sap will start flowing.
Not bad. Uh, we got two good trees. One of them in particular must have broke in uh, late fall. These, this tree here is still uh, really nice hardwood. This one had a completely broken off top, but it's good, really good solid wood. It's gonna be great for fires. So this is exciting. I always love mid-March. It's probably one of my favorite times of the year because I get to start um, planting seeds. I don't do it every year, but when I do get to do it, it's really, really fun. I'm only doing three trays for right now because we don't know our plans and or like when we're gonna be here in the summertime and such, but I got a little mini greenhouse <laughs> uh, to start the seeds. And I think I'm only gonna be doing tomatoes, jalapenos, and some peppers, and then wildflowers to start with. Pete's gonna help me set up this little tray system and uh, we'll get planting. Probably, I don't know how many years ago, Caroline must have been maybe 12 years old. And she had a little YouTube at the time. I think it was bsbulbs.com or something. Because I had a bulb company back in the day when I was gardening. And it was so cute because she did a 10 minute video of how to set up this um, little greenhouse. And uh, planting tomatoes and things like that. It's adorable. I don't know if she'll let us put that on here to show you guys, but it is probably the cutest thing I've ever seen. Hi, my name is Caroline and I'm the host of Gardening for Kids and VSBulbs.com. I, I love the winter and I love snowboarding. And I also love throwing snowballs. <laughs> Sorry. But there's nothing I love more than bulbs and growing flowers. That's why. Wait, where are the flowers? Oh well. That's why I bought a greenhouse, an indoor greenhouse. Kids are just doing it alone. Once it gets taller like this, you'll probably have to help them put the taller parts together. I needed help with that. Hey guys, for the last couple of days we have been doing some real serious travel planning. 
Now, we've been pouring over the maps, looking at all different options, and uh, we're really excited that pretty soon we're gonna be getting back into our vehicles and doing some serious overlanding. We've really enjoyed our time here at the island, though. Uh, spending almost a full year here has been a dream of ours for a long time. And once the ice breaks up, which is gonna happen pretty soon, we will have accomplished that. So that's been a, a huge bucket list item that we're really thankful we were able to fulfill. But we are going to be getting back in our vehicles soon. <clears throat> so initially we have some work to do on them to get them prepped for international travel. Things like getting big brakes put on them and a bunch of other items just to get them ready for some of the plans we have. Now here are those plans. Initially we're going to spend some time this summer First of all, getting that work done, but then also finishing some of the trails we started, like the Trans-Labrador Highway. If, that's, if that works out for us, we want to get to Eastern Canada. We've dabbled in there many, many years ago when we first started out, but we have some ideas of some remote, remote places we want to finish. And then, come late summer, we hope to start going international. Now, the three big bucket list items that we have on our list are A, to finish the... Pan American. So we've gone from the Arctic Ocean all the way down the west coast of Canada, all through BC and into Washington, Oregon, California, and into Mexico. But we still need to do Central America and South America. So that's on the list, um, all the way down to Ushuaia in Argentina, and then possibly have our vehicle vehicles shipped across the ocean to uh, South Africa. And then that would be next on our list to do the southern part of the African continent, South Africa, Namibia, Botswana, and maybe more. And then possibly up to North Africa, Morocco, and some of the desert areas there, and then into Spain, and then into Europe, and then back home. So it's like a three to five year plan, and it's a big, huge loop all the way down the west coast of the Americas and up the east of Africa. But, or we could do it the other way around and we're trying to figure that out right now where we go to Europe first and then work our way south and then back north through the Americas to back to here. So what makes our, the, what we're going to base our decision on, of course, are a couple of things. It's all logistics, the cost of fuel in certain places and lodging and shipping and all that stuff. So all the costs associated with it and just the timing so it fits in with everything else that's going on in our lives, as well as, um, you know, Lando, can he come to certain countries or not other countries? And what are, what, are we, what are the plans for that, making sure that he's taken care of while we're away if he can't come to a certain part of the world? Um, so a lot of research is going on right now, a lot of planning, a lot of reading of books and uh, pouring over maps. So it's fun. Some of you have said in the comments, planning a trip is uh, just as fun as going on the trip sometimes. So. We're gonna be doing a lot of this for the next couple of weeks, and we can't wait to bring these awesome adventures to you guys. One of the things we take into consideration when making our decision is what do you think? You know, we're not just traveling anymore, we're also creating adventure videos and movies about our travels and bringing them to you on YouTube. And um, so we'd love to hear from you. What, which way do you think we should go? Where should we start? The Pan American, should we start on the European side? I'd love to hear your comments. Leave them in the comments below and we'll take all of that into consideration as we plan our next overland adventures on the Epic Family Road Trip. So Peter and I went out there to move the fishing hut and it is just like a lake in there and so I quickly ran back to get uh, Pete Jr. to help us take it down even though it's really easy to take down but we're just gonna move around some holes and then get our red chairs out. We're supposed to, it's like a balmy warm day today. It's amazing and it's Pete's um, senior's birthday so happy birthday babe and I love you. Super thankful for you. Anyways, so this is exciting. We have a campfire going. We're just kind of 
moving around things on the lake, making sure it's all clean because tonight or tomorrow night, I can't remember, but one of these <laughs> nights is uh, we're expecting either a lot of snow or a lot of um, rain. So that's going to change the consistency of the lake. And man, it is spring is in the air for sure. So. So these are these special ice screws and they work really good. You can use them on slushy ice but even rock hard ice. We put these in probably in um, late February or early March when the ice was still very solid but um, yeah time to get them out because every day they sink deeper into the ice and then I fear in about two weeks things are going to really start breaking up around here. So. showed you these but they got a really good thread on them and so you just twist you kind of have to hit them to get them started and then twist them in they work great this tent's been set up here for a couple of weeks now and we've had some pretty heavy duty wind storms but it stood its ground this really cozy spot that Pete and I would come in and just suntan out here on the ice with our two red chairs but uh, now I think the weather is changing and we need to move them we got one out and then now this one is a bit more stuck but what a beautiful spot just kind of tucked away right here enjoying some sun out of the wind well, let's see if we can get her out
All right, so we have both chairs out. It feels like we're really wrapping things up and getting ready for spring. We have a nice brisket on for Pete's birthday, so we're gonna go check that out and see how that's going and stoke the outside fire and probably just sit outside and enjoy this nice weather. We woke up to pouring rain this morning and as you can see the lake is going back to what it was back in December, a layer of water and slush on top of the ice. So it's supposed to get cold again tonight though and I think a kind of a windstorm is bringing in the cold front. So we're going to get these machines off of the lake, otherwise I, I fear they'll freeze solid into the ice. So um, that's our task for right now, take them around, bring them onto the island somewhere where we can get them off easy tomorrow. And let's take a look at tomorrow. Who knows? This could be a skating rink out here. like we did in the fall when the ice was starting to freeze we gave you reports on the ice we're gonna do the same now as it starts to thaw so we had lots of rain and there's a layer of water over the entire lake but let's check the, the thickness of the ice yeah it feels like the bottom there so 19 inches of hard ice and then about two inches of slush so spring is coming but it's not here yet it's we don't know, we've never been here for the breakup of the ice, so um, we don't know if it takes weeks or days or a month. But just like in the fall, we had to be prepared to be uh, kind of landlocked here for a bit. And uh, we're making those preparations coming up next week, because I think after that, we're going to start to see uh, the lake change from being frozen over to breaking up. So we'll take you with us on this journey. It's uh, like I said, it's all new for us, but pretty exciting that spring is uh, on its way. And in the meantime, we'll, we'll see you down the road. <laughs> we have to do it again. That's fine. Okay. I didn't say it though. Okay. And in the meantime, we'll, we'll see you down, down the road. Good job, everyone. <laughs>